Masks are an indispensable tool in Final Cut Pro 10 for doing color correction because you can limit your corrections to select areas within the frame, often referred to as secondary color correction. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use beast blind masks for masking out features on a human face, then tracking the mask to follow the subject's movement using keyframes. Here, I've duplicated the bottom clip and placed it above the primary storyline in order to isolate Rachel's lips to enhance the color of her lipstick. The bottom clip has been temporarily disabled in order to see the effect of my mask adjustments. In order to get a closer look at how beast blinds behave, I'll press Z to call up the zoom tool and click a few times on her lips to zoom in. From the masks category in the effects browser, I'll drag and drop the draw mask effect onto the top clip. In the inspector, I'll choose B spline from the shape type pop-up menu. Unlike Bezier splines that can be shaped using tangent controls, B splines are manipulated using only points. You just begin clicking around the object you want to mask. Here, I'll follow the shape of her mouth without worrying about how many control points I'm adding. I'll just keep adding them until her mouth is completely enclosed. B splines are different from Bezier splines in that each control point forms an organic curve from one point to the next. Notice as I drag the control point away from the others, a curve is formed between them and behaves like a rubber band. I'm doing this to demonstrate that B spline control points are offset from the mask surface itself and that by dragging a control point, you are more or less accentuating the curve. B splines are therefore ideal for creating shapes that are more organic and less angular, like the features on a human face. The great thing about B splines is that if you need more points for areas that require a smoother curve, just double click to add more points, then move the points until you achieve the shape you're after. I'll re enable the bottom clip by pressing V, then press Command 6 to reveal the color board. In the saturation pane, I'll increase the saturation on the global slider to accentuate the pink in her lipstick. To finesse the mask even further, I'll click the top clip to reveal the mask controls and continue to adjust the control points as needed. When I'm finished, I'll press Shift Z to zoom out, return to the inspector, and turn off the mask overlays to view the final composite. To animate the mask so that it follows Rachel's head movement, I'll spill open the transforms and set a keyframe for the mask's X and Y position at the current playhead location. I'll move my playhead to the beginning of the clip by pressing Home, then adjust the mask position in the viewer using the on-screen controls. Because I set an initial keyframe in the middle of the clip, a new position keyframe is automatically created at the new playhead location. I'll then press the End key to move the playhead to the end of the clip and reposition the mask to add a third keyframe. When animating masks, a good practice is to set your position keyframes at the beginning and end of your clip, then move the playhead between these keyframes to make your mask adjustments. Doing this will allow you to use only the minimum number of keyframes necessary to track the movement. Now my task is simply to move my playhead and adjust the mask position whenever Rachel's head moves away from the mask. Great. Let's play the final effect back. Within a few minutes, I'm able to do a small makeup enhancement using an animated beast blind mask. 